Sorry, oh. you right at the back there. Good to go now. Yeah, just yeah. some chumps. What's your take on it? Uh, I mean, it's better we have a, a have a loss in a warm up game than before hitting a test match. But at the end of the day, uh, it was a great workout for us. I mean, I, I don't see it as being terribly relevant to, to what's coming up ahead of us. It gave us a chance to get bowling loads up, to, to try some different people and, and I guess get some match legs back into our players. So in terms of the two matches that we had, absolutely invaluable for us. So this week, what's the focus in terms of practice? Uh, well, today we actually had a day off from, from training. Um, I think the guys have been working hard for the last wee while. Now it's about getting, I guess, used to the pitches here at Lords again, just getting really clear on the roles and the, what we're, the way we want to play. Um, and then come Thursday, it's always an exciting day, that first day at Lords. Uh, Nichols has been in isolation. Uh, how confident are you he'll be fit to play? Yeah, at the moment we think it's unlikely um, that, that Henry will play. Um, obviously with the COVID, just, that just put him back another week or so from, from where we were wanting. But he is progressing really well. Um, I, I think at the moment he's an unlikely starter. Uh, so we will hold Michael Bracewell here as extra cover um, in, within the squad. Uh, talk to us about Baz. He's a big talk here in, in the UK. Um, what kind of impact do you think he'll have with the English squad? Yeah, look, to be honest, I haven't really thought too much about Brendan and the impact he will have. Um, that, that's up for him to do that with England, what we're really focusing on, on the way that we play our cricket and the way that we play. Um, I have no doubt, knowing Baz, that he will have an instant impact. And um, when you, when, I think any time you get a new captain, new coach, I guess new managing director as well, then there'll be a lot of eyes on those guys around the change and what they might, I guess, instigate. But, um, look, Brendan will bring that uh, heart-on-the-sleeve type play I'm sure into that England squad. You'll have an insight into some of the players, um, are you at all threatened by that and why? No I'm not threatened by it, um, I, I think all the squads these days, the scouting suites and stuff that they have, there's there's no way it really to hide for any player around the world at the moment so um, we've done our, our scouting um, so now it's just right signing off the way that we play. And the atmosphere, what are you expecting? Uh, it's always exciting coming to Lords. I mean, the home of cricket, um, there's been a number of our players who have been here in the past and had some incredible performances. Yeah, and you, I guess, have to think back to Devin Conway on, on debut um, here last year in a, in a double hundred. I mean, th those sort of things are, are childhood dreams that you live for. And I think any time you get to come back to Lords, it's a special occasion. Just one more. Who are the key players in England that you think you need to look out for? Oh, I think we've got to look out for everyone. I think it's dangerous when you when you start, I guess, putting some over others. But I think there'll be some players that, that probably will have more of an impact, I guess, because of where they're at in their careers and, and what's happened to them recently. So you look at their bowling lineup, lineup of Broad and Anderson, I'm sure, have something to prove. Ben Stokes didn't play against us last year when we're here, so whenever he comes back into the team, he adds some extra spice as well. So, look, we're, we're really focused on ourselves, but really, really looking forward to what's ahead of us. I think it's going to be a great series. Thank you. I know you're focused on yourselves, but it's going to be strange, isn't it, seeing Brendan McCullum in an England training kit? In the opposition? Yeah, it already is strange. I, I walked across here, across the ground before, and him and I walked together, and I, I think he went into the right dressing room when he turned left and I went right. So, uh, yeah, definitely different. Do you think England have got the right man, though, to turn them around? Look, I, I mean, that's a decision that's really out of my hands. I know Brendan will bring... Um, he, he'll be really clear on what he wants, and he'll have a clear vision of, of how he wants them to play the game. I mean, whether that happens instantly or not, I guess it always takes a little bit of a time to embed those things. So I, I'm not sure his impact right now will, will be as much as what you might see in a year's time. So do England cricket fans need to be patient with him? Yeah, I think they do. I, I think... Uh, if you think a coach is going to come in and make instant change, uh, um, it's, it's still about the players playing the game and, and yeah, I'm sure he will have some, some impact, but whether, as I said, whether that's right now or in the future, who knows. Expectations of this England Test team, one win in 17 here, are very low, but from the outside, uh, do you see a team that's got potential? Do you see a team that's beatable? I mean, where do you see that they're at? How bad are they? <laughs> uh, look, I, I think whenever we start a game, I, I always say there's a 50% chance of either team winning the game. So you still have to go out there, you have to play good cricket, and you have to do it over five days. 
Um, England, yes, they've struggled to do that for a while, but look through the players within their team. There's there's players who have a lot of class and who have a lot of experience as well. So I'm sure that they've looked internally a, a around how they've been going, and I'm sure they want to turn that round. And it's certainly, I guess, on our watch, it'll be it'll be something that we've got to try and deny and stop them from doing that. You talked about it being a great occasion and you know a, a, an ambition for kids to come and play here at Lords, and yet Trent Bolt's not available really to, to do that. Are you at peace with that situation now? It's not a new not a new thing, but you you know probably going to be missing out on one of your big weapons. Possibly, yeah. Look, Trent arrives in later today, um, and we'll see how he scrubs up. But I, I guess I've had conversations with Trent leading up into this. It's part of the world and the way it is right now. And I guess with the I guess complexity of putting all schedules together, and then you obviously have the IPL on top of that. It just adds another layer to it all. So we've been through this before with different players. So I guess. It's some, not something that's new to us and, and we'll deal with that tomorrow probably and work out what's best for us going forward with, with Trent Bolt in particular and Brendan's appointment uh, as well as reflecting obviously on well on his standing also reflects I guess the way this New Zealand team is perceived here the respect that you're held in uh, the impact you've made on here over the last I don't know five, eight, ten years uh, are you kind of conscious of that how, how do you feel about that uh, I think it's I think it's always nice when you have um, Kiwi coaches, for example, that are being sought after around the world, and it's it's not just Brendan. There's a number of IPL coaches and that who who um, are born and played in, and coached in New Zealand in the past. Uh, I guess it means we're doing something right in New Zealand. Um, yeah, I, I think. Uh, for anyone who coaches or plays at this level, it's it's an absolute privilege, and I'm sure Brendan will see that whether he's coaching for us or, or coaching England. As someone who kind of followed on from what Brendan and Mike started off, I mean, can you see yourselves with what you've managed to develop, how much of an impact he had on the New Zealand team from when he was captain? Absolutely. I mean, there, there's no doubt that um, Brendan and Mike were the catalyst for starting some change in, in New Zealand, and um, whilst they did finished some time ago now I guess th th they were the catalyst for getting that and getting things started and, and they're probably things that we still talk about as a team now um, some of the things that, that we like to do the way we like to be seen um, so yeah and you said you walked across the ground with him and different changes I mean there's obviously going to be two Kiwi coaches Technically, there are also two Kiwi captains as well. I mean, uh, you know, four out of four uh, this game. Is that a special thing for, for New Zealand? Yeah. Um, two, two are representing New Zealand, two are representing England, though. So I, I guess at the end of the day, we're still competitors as well. But, yeah, I think it's, it, it's a nice reflection of, I guess, New Zealand. I'm not sure Ben Stokes has a... Has a can remember that much about growing up in, in, in New Zealand. I'm sure a lot of... I guess what he's done, he will put down to the English system. Just on Trent, you mentioned um, unlikely to play this test. You can still put out a pretty strong bowling attack without him. Do you feel as though that squad depth is something you're, you're pretty proud of building over the past couple of years? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think we every time we sit down at a selection table and selection meeting, it, it appears it gets a little bit harder and harder. And I think that's a nice place to be in. Um, we try and, and remain loyal to those that have been in and around our squad and it's something that's really important to us. But we are seeing the emergence of some, some new talent as well and, and I guess you're always uh, looking for that right time of when you do bring people up and, and when you do have people that move on and we are still quite a different team to even a year ago at the World Test Championship. There's no Ross Taylor, there's no BJ Watling. So um, those changes are, I guess, felt within the team, and, and but that's an opportunity for someone else to come up and, and play the game. And is there a chance you'll go in without a spinner this week? Uh, there's always that chance. We've certainly gone that way before. Um, I, I think playing in, playing in England is a little bit different to New Zealand. The, the pitches are certainly cut shorter than what we're used to. Um, and from our experience in a couple of bowling, uh, a couple of warm-up matches here, uh, it, it appears it's been a pretty dry start to the summer and pitches are certainly on the drier side so we'll have a look at this next couple of days before we finalise that at 11. Obviously since last year every test you play you're world test champions does that bring any extra element to it does it kind of make you favourites going into this game because of what you've managed to achieve? Uh, 
I mean, that's more up to you guys to work out, I think, who's favourites. We certainly don't look at it that way. Um, as I said earlier, 50% chance for both teams when you start the game of winning the game, um, or whatever a draw comes into that as well. But, but you know, you, you just have to play good cricket over a long period of time, and that's all we try and do. Our, our focus is never too much about having to win or, or putting that extra pressure on. It's just winning small moments that then the end result does look after itself. And... Um, yeah, I think that's that's more important to us about how we play as opposed to the result. The result does look after itself, and we've proven that we can do it that way. Gary, you said that um, if, if Henry can't play, you've you've kept Michael Bracewell in the squad. It, is it, would would he be the first person into that five, or is that Daryl Mitchell? No, it's likely to be Daryl Mitchell. Cool. Oh, all right. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Cheers.